Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to be doing a favorite song project using Adobe Photoshop. Uh, what that entails is you'll, you'll get into Google Classroom, go to the corresponding week, and then uh, when you look at the requirements, you're going to be composing a visual image from the lyrics of your favorite song with images of the singer slash band on Photoshop. You're going to have at least eight layers in your composition. You will use uh, at least one blending mode between two of your layers and use shadows and or reflections at least you know once. Definitely put your signature on a project. Uh, some of the concepts we're gonna be talking about are the polygonal lasso tool and blending modes and uh, layer styles. So what are blending modes, layer styles? We've done it before in previous projects and this little link right here uh, describes really how it works and that's going to be in Google Classroom in case you want to click on that to, to learn more about it and you can see there's all kinds of different blending modes to choose from and that's kind of what it looks like when you use you know uh, a blending mode on top of another one you kind of get these these weird effects on, on the images so um, going back to Google Classroom the first thing you need to do uh, is really go over the rubric to make sure you're going to get a good grade. So make sure your signature is displayed, have your eight layers, you demonstrate a use of blending modes, and of course have good effort and craftsmanship. So you're going to download the favorite song template and go to those three little circles over there and open it in a new window just to make sure you can get that download function and you'll see it download right down there. And then you're going to open that up in Photoshop. But before we open up Photoshop, I just want to show you some previous examples uh, from my students that have done this project before. So you, you guys can get an idea of how these can all look different and uh, just the creative problem solving that some of them chose in their compositions. So like I said, these are just student examples to give you an idea of what this project kind of looks like and how they they can all look different so uh, hopefully you guys get an idea of what is expected from you for this project by you know seeing some of these uh, former students work so you open up Photoshop and you're gonna go to file open go to downloads find your favorite song template and then hit open it's just going to be a blank uh, transparent screen I made you download the template just because if you go to image image size it's nice and big it's so you can paste everything in there uh, it just makes it a lot easier so I, I don't have work that's turned in that has really low resolution so that's why we did this so the first thing you need to do is figure out what song you want to do and that probably will be the uh, stumbling block for a lot of you trying to figure out what song you want to do so I would say like maybe the first 10-15 minutes of class is looking up lyrics to songs that you like and hopefully that they are school appropriate uh, I have one already picked out it's uh, Heartland by Stick Figure and when you look up the lyrics you know type the lyrics and you can see them and just try to make sure they're school appropriate, please. And if you do use a snippet of your lyrics in your image, uh, don't use ones with curse words uh, if you're going to submit it in, in my work. Uh, uh, submit your work, I mean. So what you want to do is you kind of want to scan the lyrics and get an idea of, like, what do you kind of want the background to be? So if you look at, if I when I read this, I thought, you know, uh, it's kind of a happy place it's a beautiful day so I thought of a beach so and here's my image already already done I uh, I've already made it I'm just gonna remake it for you guys to show you exactly how I did it but I started with you know uh, this image right here and then I added a lens flare so what you want to do is basically you want to make a new document on uh, or make a new folder on your desktop you know maybe call it favorite song and that's where you want to save all your your stuff all your pictures so I saved 
a couple of pictures of a beautiful day that I thought would look good and I kind of went with this one instead and then as you scan the lyrics some more you know uh, you know nothing but love here and peace and harmony so I was thinking about you know maybe it's a couple that's that's happy and in love so I got a silhouette of people like it looks like they're happy you know it's because it's a happy song if you've ever heard it which I'm sure none of you have so uh, also you want to get a photo of the, the band or the singer who sings it so I looked that up and I saved it into this folder uh, it talks about uh, I can give you my world so I actually if you look right here I actually have a picture of a world and then uh, I think that's it for now and then I got the 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 uh, the band's logo to put in there too so in my folder I have one two three four five six things I don't I don't even use this one so I'm just go ahead and delete that one and I know it says you need at least eight layers or seven layers or whatever it is uh, let me look for clarification yeah you're gonna use at least eight layers in your composition so and I know I only have I only saved one two three four five uh, but I got it covered with the signature that counts as a layer and other stuff so you don't need to really go into depth obviously if you want to add more layers that's that's awesome but I'm looking for eight specifically so I you scan these lyrics and then when you find a picture that you like you know say like this one you just right click save image as this is a PNG file and then you save it into your favorite song folder so save all your stuff that you and you might not use it all uh, so just remember that so like stick figure logo you know find one or your band's logo find one you like and then you uh, just click on it and then save image as and save it in your folder anyways you I would get about I don't know five to six pictures of the stuff you need like the background some of the elements from the lyrics and of course you you definitely want to put the singer or the band in there so first what I'm gonna do is since I have it all saved in there I'm gonna go ahead and start so I don't need this anymore because I already did it so I'm gonna open up favorite song template and then I'm gonna file open go to your desktop and go to your Hopefully you have some pictures saved in there. Hopefully you have your background. The background is the first thing you want to figure out. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And then uh, I'm going to drag this down. And using the move tool right here, I'm going to just drag it in. Don't need this anymore. View, fit on screen. It looks like I need to uh, move it over a little bit. View, zoom out. I'm going to zoom out just a bit so you can see the extra workspace. And if I hit, you know, Edit Free Transformers, Control T, you can see that the picture's still not all the way in. So I'm going to make it fit a little bit better. Obviously, you don't want any transparency transparency showing. So once you get it, you know, kind of squared away, hit Enter, View fit on screen now I will say this layer does not count as one of your layers so you can delete that after you have your background in now the next thing you need to do is find a picture probably I mean if you want to go this route I that's the way I did it is find a, a picture of your your band singer that will kind of fit in there so I did that already file open this is the picture that I'm using and I want to cut around all of that now this is kind of a busy background with stuff going on but if it's a transparent background it, it'll be really easy to move them in but since it's not I have to kind of zoom in and use a polygonal lasso tool to trace around them so to, to select around them so here's how you do that you get your polygonal lasso tool and if you can't find it it's you know underneath something maybe and then I like to start at the top 
and you just click once and it creates a little anchor point now notice I am zoomed in that's fine so I'm just gonna, every time I click it sets a little anchor point now as you get down to right about you know here and this is easiest with the mouse I, I cannot stress that enough you probably want to do this with the mouse is if you hold down the space bar while you're still using this a little hand pops up this allows you to stay zoomed in and you can click and drag with your mouse upwards so you can stay zoomed in you don't have to zoom out zoom in and then that way you can it'd be a lot faster tracing around I'm not getting every little detail it's uh, kind of leaving out some of the fringe so you want to go nice and slow click 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 it clickety click don't click too fast because then uh, it'll complete that selection so you want to be really careful not to do that I'm not I'm not gonna really get his inner ear monitor right there but I really really love the handy dandy space bar uh, shortcut when you hold down the space bar you can click and drag with your mouse that way you can stay zoomed in around your uh, subject whatever you're cutting out now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, speed up a little bit to select around this so you don't have to hear me ramble while I uh, do my photoshopping now when you get up to the top you want to go real slow or where you originated anyways and then you want to double click to connect the selection and then you can go to view fit on screen to uh, to see you know to see the whole composition now if you want you can turn off the lock on your layer and if you have backspace right now it's just gonna erase him so edit undo maybe you want to erase the background select inverse that that flips the selection then you can hit backspace and then go to select deselect now if you have a really hard edge that you don't like around here here's something that I kind of taught myself over the years is after I erase the background I'm gonna use the magic wand tool to just basically select around him notice I didn't I selected on the gray and white checkerboard now if you go to select modify feather and you know maybe make it one or two I wouldn't go any higher than that and then if you hit backspace a couple times it kind of gives it that softer edge and so it doesn't look like it's obviously been photoshopped that's how you get really really good at Photoshop is you you know you try to fool people so select deselect and then I'm gonna drag this down like this and I'm gonna use the move tool and just move him in I don't need I you might want to save this so file save as you know just in case you mess up you have that as a Photoshop document you can just drag it in really quick all right so it looks like the color doesn't match and you don't want to put him like right here because he has no I don't know he has no legs so if if you have something if you have their whole body you, you, you have all kinds of you know options to do but I my options are limited since he's cut off right here so I'm gonna go to edit free transform and then I'm just gonna you know make him kind of uh, as big as I want him on here I forget how big I had him on this one let me turn these on beep boop beep alright so he's about that big edit free transform and you know get it get, I'm gonna cover up that stupid idiotic sand whatever that is right there it looks like a elephant took a big dump on the beach anyways I'm gonna put it right here and then you hit enter now it looks like he's really red so if you need to adjust the lighting 
Uh, there's multiple ways you can do that and you know it's always what, what can you do with the image so image and you want to adjust it so just remember that image adjustments and then what I like to do is sometimes I just like to do auto color so image auto color see what that does and it just looks like it made it darker but that's fine image adjustments and if that works that, that's fine if it looks like the color matches I believe there's a even a uh, color color match something around here selective color no wait, what is it match color that's what it is I mean you can try that uh, I really don't like trying to mess with this uh, the source would be uh, layer 2 although I don't see it showing up so maybe I won't even do that uh, but you can kind of mess around with these See, that makes it really, the color intensity goes down. And then the luminance, I don't even know, that just makes it lighter or darker. Like I said, you can experiment with that. It, it doesn't really work for me. So I'm going to go to what I always used to do, and that's just uh, color balance right there. And then you can mess with these. I think I need less yellow, so I need more blue. And you can mess with these till you get it to where you kind of like it so I think I need way more of this blue and green just to I'm trying to look you know match the same kind of daylight that uh, is in the background so you just kind of have to mess with these a little bit until you get it to where you kind of like it so once you do, just hit OK. Uh, like I said, you don't have to do this. That's only for those people that really like to, uh, you know, go for that 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 perfectionism, that that level of detail that very few people have. So maybe I see some light source. If you look at his picture, it looks like there's a light source up here, and you can kind of see the sun is somewhere up here. But I'm going to go ahead and add a lens flare. So I'm going to go on this layer and go to and again you don't have to do this but this is just something you can do if you want to add a lens flare you go to filter render lens flare and then this is going to pop up and you know you can turn the brightness up or down uh, I kind of want to put it up here since it looks like it's you know coming from from over there and then you can even change the type of lens flare it is so maybe I'll do like like this one right here. Although I, I really kind of like that one too. So if you hit OK, and you can always edit undo if you don't like it, and you know redo it. I wouldn't choose that again up there because it's just going to do the same exact spot. So remember that. So go to filter. You have to go to render lens flare if you want to move it if it's not in the right spot or something. I think I'm, I will go with this one because it creates those nice little circles right there. All right, so after you do that, you know, you got your subject in there. Uh, the next thing you want to do is, you know, s start bringing in. Maybe you want to bring in uh, some of the, the elements. So maybe I'll bring in uh, the logo. So I'm going to go File, Open, and there's the logo open it up now if it's not in a PNG format you have a white background or something like that that's fine too all you gotta do is use the magic wand tool I'm gonna select the white now I need to select those as well so you can go to select similar but it might if you have white in your logo it might select that so there what I would do just to be safe get your magic wand tool select that and then to get those three if you go up here in the options bar and you hit the uh, add to selection it's that second one right here and you just click 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 and then it adds to the selection now if I hit backspace nothing's gonna happen because we have a lock on the layer so I'm gonna turn off the lock hit backspace and then the same thing applies since you have it already selected if you want to feather it because sometimes it's got these like really hard edges this is the the only bad thing about Photoshop it's not like Illustrator where everything's nice and, and in vector format 
if you want to feather that just a little bit same thing select modify feather maybe just one and then hit backspace and you can see it kind of erased it kind of made it feathered a little bit better and I hit it a couple times then select deselect view fit on screen and then I'm gonna use the move tool drag this down and then drag it in there and just stick it right there for now like it took me a while to figure out where I wanted to do that when I originally made this but I know it's going in the corner now so but just drag it in and you can always arrange your layers how you see fit don't need that all right so next thing I'm gonna do is open up one of the elements of my lyrics maybe it's the earth the, the world and I do not want all of that black so I'm gonna use the magic wand tool luckily it's all black and I don't have to use the polygonal lasso tool or the, the elliptical marquee tool to select around it I can just uh, use a magic wand tool and then it looks like it's picking up some stars but that's fine go over here turn off my lock hit backspace and then I'll even feather this select modify feather maybe I'll do two and then hit backspace a couple times and then check out my edge okay it's, it looks kind of fuzzy that's kind of what you want you don't want it to be super crisp because then it gives that like that jagged look so view fit on screen select deselect to get rid of that selection now I'm gonna use the move tool I'm gonna move this down move that in and now this took me a while to figure out where I wanted it and I figured yeah I think it looked pretty cool if it was like you could see it from outer space like it's a a, a second a second earth like maybe it's on a collision to, to collide I don't know but I wanted it to be peaceful so you can edit free transform and this is where I want you know you to remember that oh yeah I have to I have to do a blending mode and this is what a blending mode is so if I put this right here and hit enter to get rid of the box now if I look over here on my my layer box up here it says normal now this is blending modes I'm gonna change this to dissolve nothing really happens but notice that is still highlighted blue right there so that's that's good because now you can use the down arrow on your keyboard to cycle through all those blending modes that I showed you on that website to see how it interacts with the layers underneath so it really won't react with the stick figure logo because that's in the corner but it will interact with the background layer so if this is highlighted blue like I said it's normal and you change it to dissolve and then you use the down arrow keys on your keyboard you can find a font that you kinda like to you know do the blending mode option so find one you like I think I like the screen one that one turned out really I think it was screen no it wasn't screen it was it was lightened maybe um, yeah I think it was lightened depending on which which one you want so say I want it right there but I want to cut where the uh, the ocean is so I'm just gonna grab my uh, rectangular marquee tool and I'm gonna zoom in right here and I'm gonna create right there and just go all the way across oops looks like my I'm on a fixed ratio you probably want that to say normal so I gotta do this again be fit on screen let me try that again so I want it to start right about there and cut across the bottom part of the earth so I'm dragging it all the way across hopefully your computer's not as slow as mine and then you go down make sure you got it all 
So view, fit on screen. Looks like I missed some, that's fine. I can get it with the eraser. So if I hit backspace, it's just gonna erase that selection. So then select, deselect, get your eraser in case you really screwed up like I did. And then just, I didn't really screw up, but you get the idea. And then I'm gonna erase that right there. So I got it all. So let me zoom in on this, see what it looks like. Yeah, it goes pretty much straight across. Now what you can do is you can even use your eraser. You don't have to do this. Uh, and I'm going to turn down the opacity so it's only going to erase like 20% of what I erase. I make my brush really big, really soft, 0%. And then just really lightly just skate the bottom of that so it, it looks like it's really an outer space, you know, headed towards us. So that's something you can do. I, I definitely want you to do that at least once. You can even do that with your your subject if you want. Uh, if you go here and then you just beep, 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 you know, find one you like there too if, in case, you know, you want to do that. That's fine. I wish more people would do this because I think it adds a nice little effect to the composition, makes it more you know, artistic. You don't always have to leave it where it says normal. You, you know, you can always change it to something else. And I think I might. I think I might just leave it like, you know, where he's kind of ghosty a little bit. I kind of like that look. All right. So the next thing you want to do is then you start adding more stuff in. So uh, one of the things that the lyrics talked about was... Uh, you know, nothing but love here and peace and harmony. Nothing but love here. It's our destiny. So, you know, that's why I looked up those picture of the of the people. Uh, they just look like they were having fun running to the beach. And even though it's a silhouette, it's just easier to select around them. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And they are already in PNG format, which is awesome. So I'm just going to drag them in like this. Close that view fit on screen now you might have to you know use your polygonal lasso tool to select around it so just remember that and then i'm gonna go to edit free transform you know make it the size i want maybe i want them right here before i do anything to them i will add a reflection or a shadow so i'm going to duplicate this layer hit ok and then I'm using the underneath layer, the original layer, to go edit, free transform, to bring up the box. And then you're going to hold down control on your keyboard. And you're going to grab this middle top box right here, this little, in the, in the bounding box. You're going to grab that while you hit, while you hold down control. And you're just going to drag it down like this to get you know till you want you know till you get the shadow angle that you like so once you get it like that then you can move it to their feet now notice hers doesn't really match up so if it doesn't match up you might have to finagle it a little bit by holding down control and you know moving it around and if that doesn't work you can even hit this up here which is the warp tool so if you hit that, it creates all these little these little dots, and then you can just move it separate separately like that. Uh, I'm gonna drag that all the way over there. So that's I think that's about that's about right. All right. So after you do that, you hit Enter to get the shadow where you like it. It's not done yet because I still need to you know maybe blur it and turn down the opacity. If you want to change a color, maybe you want that totally, totally black. You go to right click, blending options, go to color overlay, you highlight it, the whole, highlight the whole thing, and then right here, change that to black. Hit OK. And then you can even turn down the opacity so it's not so in your face. 
And then you can even uh, get your eraser, make it really soft eraser, and you definitely want to turn down the opacity. It, this this is for those people that want to really push the envelope of realism. And then just really lightly, you know, maybe go over some areas so they're not so dark, so it looks more real. And that counts as one of your layers. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six layers. So I only really need two more. So I'm gonna go back to my stick figure logo, which is right here. And then make that a little bigger. So edit free transform. And then maybe I wanna rotate it a little bit. That, that looks pretty cool, like it's coming out from behind the uh, the earth right there has, has a nice little depth effect and then the next thing you want to do maybe you don't like the way they they stand out so much maybe you want them to to you know look like this more so what I'm gonna do is to do that you go back to that layer and this is again this you don't you might not have to do this this is if you want to do that kind of effect uh, you just right click go to blending options you know change it to color overlay and I think I put an outer glow on them but I think it was like a light blue maybe maybe definitely turn down the opacity and then if you go to color overlay you can kind of turn down that opacity as well if it's too strong but if it's not if you like it the way it looks and maybe you just want to turn down the the, the fill what the fill does is it turns down what uh, what the original color was, or was that uh, maybe it's opacity? There we go. Yeah. So if you don't want it super bright, you can always mess with fill and opacity. Fill does. Uh, if you turn off the color overlay, fill just gets rid of the color that you you colored, but leaves all the other blending options. So if I wanted to, you know, maybe turn up the opacity all the way. And turn down the fill it just gets rid of the color and makes it see-through so that's something you can do as well um, so just experiment with the opacity and fill you don't have to but it just is a nice it's a nice experimental thing for future projects if you ever do Photoshop again all right, so I have that. Let's see what else I need uh, if you want to add lyrics and that's part of the requirements uh, it's good to get lyrics that don't have a lot of curse words or, or that are school appropriate. I mean, if you're doing this on your own at home, obviously you can do whatever you want. But uh, for my students, if you submit work, try to make it school appropriate. So I highlighted uh, this line because I really like this line. So you highlight it, right click, copy, and then go back here, get your type tool, find a font you like I like the calling heart and your font color right now is gonna be black but that's fine so you just click once and then you hit control V on your keyboard it'll put it all right there now if you want to have that effect where it's kind of wavy here's how you do that let me move uh, Scott over a little bit he's a little bit closer there we go go back up here if you go to the type tool, I'm on the type tool, I have that layer highlighted. Right here in your options bar, you have all these different options to choose from. So say I wanted to do a, a flag, so it's wavy. You can always mess with these if that's you know, too much. And then just move it where you need it. Maybe I want it right here. Now if you want to do blending options on your on your your type which I very strongly suggest for those A plus grades you just right click on that layer go to blending options and say you want it to be the same style as uh, the stick figure logo or your band's logo whatever uh, you go to color overlay you click on this black and then just move your your mouse button over to the same gray right there it'll make it the same gray hit OK Looks like it's got a black stroke. So if I highlight the word stroke, it's already got black right there. Maybe turn this down just a bit. 
And then it looks like it's got a yellow outer glow. So then I'm going to go to outer glow. Uh, highlight that. And then you can change this to yellow. And maybe, you know, mess mess with the levels. The opacity probably needs to be turned up. The size needs to be turned down. You know, so experiment with that. So it kind of looks like, like that one. Drop shadows are always cool. I love drop shadows. I, I don't think enough people use drop shadow. It creates a nice little depth thing. Okay, so I have that. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. Only layer I need left is my signature. And you can either type that in, which is, you know, go to the type tool, uh, find a font you like, and then, oops, edit undo. You know, type it in. Probably want to click first and then change it. And then, you know, you can do that and add the same blending options if you want. Or you can, you know, bring in your signature uh, file. Uh, open recent for me because I just had it up. Let me get rid of this. Uh, file open recent. And then you can just, you know, drag it in with your move tool if, in case you wanted to use your, your signature. It's, again, it's totally up to you, but it is part of your requirements to have your signature either digital or you just type it in. And then I always like it in the corner, so put it in the bottom corner somewhere. So I have, well, those aren't really count as three layers. All right, so there's a signature layer. Uh, I don't really need that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight layers. And they're all right there. So this is the the bare minimum. As as always, you can always add more and do do more. Uh, I always encourage people to really push themselves. So once you're totally done, you want to go to File, Save As. You definitely want to save it as a Photoshop document before you do anything. And then uh, you want to save it as a JPEG after it gets done saving. File, save as. Save it as a JPEG to turn it in. And then uh, I, for the file name, favorite song, your name, hit save, hit OK because it's a JPEG. And then you go to uh, Google Classroom. You go to Add or Create, File, Browse. You locate where you saved it. There it is. Hit Open. And then, yeah, you just submit it. Turn in. So hopefully uh, you guys did a, a song that you like and you were motivated and it's something that you're proud of. That's, that's all I really care about. Um, so in closing, I'm going to hit you with my favorite line. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. So hopefully your energy is flowing towards something positive today. And uh, I just hope you guys have a great day. God bless.